Hi friends. So have you ever held a grudge? A grudge is when somebody hurts your feelings and you take that hurt and you hold on to it tight and you squeeze it down deep inside and don't let it go. Well, I have a fun story for you today. It's called The Grudge Keeper. And in this story, people hold grudges all the time, but they do it in a way that's different than you and I might do it. They do it by writing them down and giving them to a person named Cornelius who keeps them forever and ever. Well, at least until something happens and he can't hold on to them anymore. Take a look. The Grudge Keeper, written by Marl Rockcliffe, illustrated by Eliza Wheeler. No one in the town of Bonnie Ripple ever kept a grudge. No one that is except old Cornelius, the Grudge Keeper. Ruffled feathers, petty snits, minor tips and major huffs, insults, umbrage, squabbles, dust-ups. The grudge keeper received them all, large and small, tucking each one carefully away in his ramsackle cottage. When Minnie Fletcher's goat gulped down Elvira Boggs' prize-winning zinnias, Elvira marched right over to the grudge keeper to file a complaint. When mischievous Sylvester Quincy snagged the schoolmaster's toupee, the schoolmaster took terrible offense, straight to Cornelius. When Big Otto stomped on Lily Bell's new shoes at the spring fling, she limped off to Cornelius and flung her accusations at his feet. As time went by, the grudges piled up. They filled the fireplace. They overflowed the tub. Cornelius jammed them and crammed them into every crack and corner, but they kept on coming. Then one day, a wind arose. At first, it was a gentle breeze. Laundry fluttered on the lines. Lily Bell's best flowered bonnet skipped away. Big Otto captured it and brought it back, but Lily Bell just grumbled that the petals were all out of place. Soon the wind grew stronger. Shutters shook and cupboards rattled. Minnie Fletcher's fresh baked lemon pie slid off the windowsill and landed on Elvira's cat. The wind ran riot through the schoolhouse, overturning ink pots and hurling chalk. The schoolmaster's toupee flew off his head and sailed outside, where Minnie Fletcher's goat gobbled it up. Night fell, but no candle would stay lit. The people huddled with their grudges in the darkness, listening to the hissing, Howling, creaking, crashing, moaning, groaning, whistling wind. At last, the wind sputtered, slowed, and stopped. The townspeople crept out into the morning light. Clutching their new grudges, they set off for the grudge keeper's cottage. But what was this? The wind had mixed and mingled, tossed and turned, tumbled and jumbled, and finally dumped the rumpled, crumpled grudges in one whopping pile. Nothing was where it should be. Squabbles were scrambled with quibbles. Low blows rested high up in the pile. High dungeon had drifted down low. 
and the left-handed complement had landed on the right-hand side. The townspeople crowded around the mountain of grudges, pushing, grabbing, shoving, shouting, give me that, me first, and mine. In the hubbub, no one heard the feeble groan that squeezed out from the bottom of the pile. No one but Sylvester Quincy. It's Cornelius, he cried. Cornelius? The shouts and shoving stopped. Why hadn't anybody thought to wonder where the grudge keeper had gone? Sylvester Quincy dove in first. Slowly, the others followed suit. Grudges scattered like confetti as they worked to dig Cornelius out of the pile. Minnie Fletcher found a grudge labeled goats who make pigs of themselves. Holding it out to Elvira, she said, I'm sorry about your zinnias. Elvira looked at her old, worn-out grudge. What do I need with that, she said, and fed the grudge to Minnie Fletcher's goat. The schoolmaster smoothed out a snit called Sassy Spitball Spraying Schoolboys. He glanced at Sylvester Quincy. Then with a shrug, he rolled it up again and flung it far away. I found a bone to pick, Big Otto said to Lily Bell. I think it's yours. Lily Bell blushed and tossed the bone to the pet peeves. Cornelius staggered to his feet and stared around. The grudges, he cried. Where have they all gone? Big Otto eyed Elvira Bog. Minnie Fletcher sneaked a guilty look at Lily Bell. The schoolmaster shuffled his feet. Tiffs and huffs, squabbles and quibbles, all the grudges had been tossed away down to the last small scrap of peak. Not a single grudge remained. Suddenly, with a yowl, Elvira's cat shot through the crowd. Elvira stumbled into Minnie Fletcher. Minnie crashed into Big Otto, and Big Otto toppled over right on top of Lily Bell. Cornelius stood ready to receive the grudges, but they didn't come. Instead, Minnie helped Elvira to her feet. Nice bumping into you, she said. I've fallen for you, Lily Bell, Big Otto said. Please marry me. Lily Bell laughed. I guess I've fallen for you too. Everyone cheered except the schoolmaster who scowled at Sylvester Quincy. Don't think I didn't see you pulling that cat's tail, he said, and then he winked. Everyone in town turned out for the big wedding. Elvira Bog sneaked cake under the table until Minnie Fletcher grinned and told her, you can't get my goat. And when Big Otto waltzed his brand new bride into the punch bowl, Lily Bell just giggled. You're not mad, he asked. Of course I am, she said, mad about you. For no one in the town of Bonnie Ripple ever kept a grudge. Not even Cornelius. What with overflowing cupboards full of friendliness, shelves stuffed with smiles, and tabletops heaped high with hugs, he simply didn't have the room. So what do you think is the opposite to keeping a grudge? I'll give you a hint. 
It's what the people in the town did at the end of the story. If you said forgiving others, then you're right. Jesus taught us that we should forgive people who hurt us, even if it means we have to do it over and over and over again. Sometimes that can be really hard, but we can ask God to help us take away the angry, hurt feelings and to forgive those who have hurt us. So my friends, we're in the season of Lent right now, and a lot of people give something up during Lent. Maybe they gave up chocolate, maybe it's playing video games, but what if this Lent, what we gave up was keeping grudges, and instead we follow Jesus' example of forgiving. Friends, I hope you'll think about that this week and that you have a wonderful weekend and I hope to see you soon. Bye.